Hi there, welcome back for another lesson. In this lesson, we will talk about various types of chemical reactions, how to recognize them, and maybe even how to complete some of the reaction equations. So let's dive in. So the first one is called, is called sorry, a synthesis. So when we synthesize or summarize something, we take a lot of content and we basically talk about the main ideas, right? So we make it shorter. So it's the same idea here in chemistry. We will have several reactants that combine together to form one or fewer products. So we always have more reactants than we have products at the end of a synthesis. So as an example, we have N2 that reacts with 2O2 and both of them transform into 2NO2. Okay, so that's a practical example of a synthesis. A decomposition is the opposite. When we decompose something, we break it apart. So we have one reactant that breaks into two components, two products. It could be more than one reactants, but the point is you have fewer reactants than you have products. A practical example would be water breaking down into its two components, hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. Next we have neutralization. So we know that a neutralization occurs when an acid and a base are mixed together. What do we obtain from a neutralization? We get always salt and water. Okay, so this is really important. No matter the acid and the base that react together, they will neutralize each other if they are in equal quantities and have the same concentration, in other words, the same strength, but they will always produce, no matter the acid and the base present, always, always, always water and salt. So how do we know what kind of salt gets created? Well, let's use this example. We have HCl that reacts with NaOH to form water and NaCl. So how do we figure out what type of salt is created? Well, we'll analyze this reaction equation. So first of all, where does the water come from? It always comes from the same parts of those two substances. So this we know HCl is an acid because we know that there's an H, right? So anything that starts with an H is an acid. And anything that ends with OH is a base. So if we put the H and the OH together, we're going to get H2O. What are we left with? We're left with Cl and Na. Now, we could have put Cl and A, but we know better than this. We know that the metal always goes before the nonmetal when we write the equation, or the formula, I should say. So it's going to be NaCl and not ClNa. So essentially, we took the two components, the two elements left, and we created the salt. We, we recreated on paper the salt that comes out of this reaction. So if we apply this knowledge to the following reaction, what would be produced on the product side? Well, we know that the H from the acid the OH from the base will form water. That's the, the first thing we should write because that's a given. What are we left with? We're left with K and Br. So our salt will be, will be KBr. If we look at a more complex example, we have MgOH2, so the OH comes from over here, and we have H2SO4, the H that will form the water come from the acid, H2SO4. We have two H's and two OH's, so that means two molecules of water, or two moles of water, will get formed. And what are we left with for the salt? We're left with SO4, and Mg. So the salt will be, we put the metal first, Mg SO4. All right, so remember, water is always the first substance that gets created through a neutralization because of the H and OH from the acid and the base, respectively, and the other components left form the salt 
the metals always first, the non-metal or polyatomic ion will be the second part of the salt. All right. Next, we have what we call an oxidation. So an oxidation is a reaction that involves oxygen. That's why we call it an oxidation. So an oxidation is a reaction, in this case, between a metal and oxygen, and it forms what we call an oxide. So in other words, a compound that uh, is a combination of oxygen with something else. So here we have iron that combines or that reacts with oxygen to form iron oxide, so Fe2O3. Okay, so again, the oxidation comes from the fact that there's oxygen on the reactant side. Next, we have a combustion. So it says here that a combustion is a type of oxidation. Why? Because oxygen is, again, one of the reactants. But it's a special type of oxidation. Okay, so a combustion always involves a fuel, so a substance that will burn, and it will react with oxygen, and it will always, always produce carbon dioxide, water, and energy. Okay, so you can recognize a combustion by the fact that there's oxygen on the reactant side, carbon dioxide, and water on the product side. Now, when we talk about combustion, there is what we call the fire triangle, often that we refer to. So in other words, what do we need in order to have a combustion? We need three things. We need fuel, a source of fuel, so something that can burn. Uh, it, could be it could be wood, it could be gasoline. We need a source of oxygen. Very often it's going to be air. And then we need a certain amount of heat to start the combustion, what we call an ignition temperature. Ignition means to start. Okay, The ignition of a car is basically a starter of the car. So an ignition temperature, you need these two as they combine at first to reach a certain temperature before the combustion actually begins. Okay, so if there's one side of the triangle that is not present, the combustion will not occur. An example, if somebody's on fire, if the clothes catch on fire, we'll say either to the person to roll on the ground or we'll, we'll try to throw a blanket on the person. Why? Because that cuts off the oxygen supply. The air doesn't have access, it's not in contact anymore with uh, the clothing. Okay, because we smothered it with a blanket or because you're rolling on the ground, so there's no space between the, the ground and uh, the, the, the piece of clothing, so the air can't touch it and there's no more combustion possible. Okay, so as soon as one of the three sides of the triangle is no longer there, is no longer participating in the reaction, then there's no combustion, okay? All right, next we have cellular respiration, which is also a type of oxidation. So we have sugar, glucose, that reacts with oxygen. Obviously it's a type of oxidation, so there has to be oxygen here. It will create carbon dioxide and water, which we said are two products that we will encounter during uh, a specific type of oxidation, which is actually called combustion and energy is released, right? Because our body is warm and we're able to perform various tasks because we produced energy through cellular respiration. We can walk, we can talk, we can think, we can do many different things. Now, some of you might say, well, this is a type of oxidation or a type of combustion, right? Because we can draw the parallel here, oxygen, carbon dioxide, water, oxygen, carbon dioxide, dioxide sorry, water. Energy is present in both cases, and we have a fuel present in both cases. So why is it that we're not literally catching on fire? Well, a combustion doesn't always involve a flame. It involves the release of energy, but it doesn't, it doesn't mean that we're going to glow in the dark, right? So you have to, to, to watch it when you think combustion. It doesn't mean just fire. Finally, we have photosynthesis, which is the opposite of cellular respiration in the case of a plant. So plants produce their own food. They produce their own sugar. We have to ingest it. We have to eat food to get the glucose or for the body to, yeah, to basically obtain the glucose. But plants are able to make it on their own. So what they do is they take carbon dioxide from the air. It reacts with water, so water that they get from the ground, for example. They get the energy from the sun, 
and they take all that and they turn that into glucose and oxygen. So they actually release oxygen in the air. And that's why we say that plants are important for us because they do release oxygen in the air, which we need to live. We breathe it in. So half the time they do this, so during the day and at night, they take the sugar that they've created um, during the day and they do cell, they perform cellular respiration, which allows them to live. All right, so those are your typical chemical reactions that you have to be able to recognize and possibly complete. So this one you should know, you should be able to complete it, know it by heart, so to speak. This one as well, you should know the general look of a combustion. Okay, so you have to be able to recognize it and or complete the equation because it's a typical, uh, it has a, a typical structure. Um, you should be able to obviously uh, recognize and complete a neutralization. I've done some examples with you. These you have to be able to recognize them. So synthesis and decomposition and you have to understand and remember the three sides of the fire triangle which is linked to combustion. Okay so that's it. If you have questions don't be shy and ask and otherwise I will see you around for your next lesson and until then take care.